Riders of Icarus heads into open beta with plenty of new and improved features. Smite brings in a new god, summer skin sales, and launches on the Mac. Evolve evolves into a free-to-play game with no strings attached, and Warframe brings us... Space Cats? What's happening guys, James Blonde here with MMOS.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending July 11th, 2016. And starting on the news this week, we have Skyforge right smack in the middle of the Battle of Engineers event. This is an in-game promo for rewards for players who complete tasks revolving around combat vehicle modernization. So if you're playing Skyforge, then you probably know what I'm talking about. The task provided involves increasing the safety margin, increasing firepower, and ensuring combat capability in particularly difficult situations, especially under the influence of an alien environment. Any immortal that has completed all quests within Isola Diggs can take part in this promo, running from July 6th to the 20th. During the time, have your adepts help designers test out combat vehicles and receive a new generation combat vehicle sample yourself. Plenty more details for the event and its rewards over to the site page, along with the new trailer you see playing here, plus there's still plenty of time left for this event, so get to it. Next up, Kakao Games, I guess that's how you say it, formerly known as DOM, developer behind Black Desert, launched a new update that focuses around the elaborate and creative character creation functionality in the game that we all love. They're calling it the new Beauty Album update, but what it does is it allows players to share their creations with the online community via snapshot system. And any snapshot can be saved and uploaded to their online gallery, visible to all other Black Desert players, and here, players can browse through them all and even apply character designs to their own characters if the classes match up, of course. But beyond just the updates, they've also got a contest going on to get the designs and creativity flowing, so check out the Black Desert forum page to find out more. As I mentioned last week, InMass Entertainment launched the new Aces Wild update for Terra recently. This update deals new content and much requested add-ons to the game following the Secrets and Shadows update, which just proves that the developers are listening, but they still continue to make Elin exclusive classes despite people's rage. Regardless, the new content in Aces Wild includes a new level 65 dungeon called Manglemire, inhabited by a magical joker who tests players' wits as well as their weapons. For solo players, Ace Dungeons shuffle hardcore challenges and rewards on top of returning fan-favorite dungeons. A new PvP battleground, the 10v10 Kumas Royal Battleground to be exact, pits players against each other in the role of big-ass monsters, so you actually get to be BAMs in this. Pretty cool. As far as the requested add-ons, plenty of useful enhancements hit this update, like dedicated storage for players' cosmetic items, expanded flight zones for the new flying mounts, and an expansive list of class balance changes, just to name a few. Again, not a huge update, but one that's definitely welcomed. Also, as a reminder, Riders of Icarus stormed into open beta last week on July 6th. We've got a brand new CG trailer and apparently some surprise improvements to some of the game's features based on feedback that we weren't exactly expecting. Some of these new enhancements include better and more engaging tutorials, which I kind of thought were okay as they were. New control types tailored for a variety of MMO players, I'm not sure if that includes controller support. Reduced penalties for item enhancements, added achievement systems to provide engaging missions, and more ways to earn in-game currency and updates to the cash shop to align with their commitment to making Riders of Icarus a much better overall free-to-play game. And that's just what's new in open beta. In the coming months, players can also look forward to an increased level cap, new regions to explore, more dungeons, and even more mounts to tame. Not to mention more PvP stuff. Either way, the game is now live for anybody to play, available on both Nexon Launcher and Steam. Next up, Smite revealed its latest god, Erlong Shen, the illustrious sage, the Summer of Smite skin lineup, and that it's now available on Mac. Erlang Shen is a warrior with a dog, kind of similar to Scotty, except Erlang Shen's companion here can't exactly tower dive and deals a lot less damage overall. Basically, his dog doubles up his basic attack, hitting for 15% of his basic attack power. His first ability allows him to spot enemy weakness, in a sense. When activated, Erlang Shen gains additional physical damage on each strike, and ignores basic attack movement penalties for the duration. He's also able to cripple and root enemies with his second ability, transform into a mink or a turtle with his third ability that can either help him get out of danger by increasing his attack speed temporarily, or knocking up all of the enemies in his path as he gains a health shield. Pretty handy. His ultimate, on the other hand, is something we're somewhat familiar with. He taunts nearby enemies to attack him as he gains damage mitigation for 4 seconds, and after that, if he survives the attack, which he typically will, he's healed for a flat amount plus 20% of his max health. That's really handy. 
Beyond that, we have the Summer of Smite skins. Right now, we have the Rocca Bologna skin available. Tomorrow, the 12th, we'll have the Chef Specials Kepri skin, which is really cool. And after that, we'll have a new skin available every week through August 16th. So there's eight available exclusive skins in total. And for every two Summer of Smite skins or Smite items you purchase, you'll get a bonus limited item free, which is also good. And lastly, if you've got an iMac or a MacBook Pro, Smite is now on Mac, opening up the player base even more. Plus, the new trailer is pretty funny as well. It takes a stab at both PC and Macs. Likewise, Paladins is giving us a little bit more formal breakdown of Victor's abilities. Okay, so perhaps I was a little harsh on the level of generic soldier Victor is. I should have mentioned that he was intentionally put into the game to have him... Uh, make it a little easier for players to transition from standard shooters to ability-based shooters like Paladins, kind of like Soldier 76 in Overwatch. That being said, Victor's abilities are very straightforward, so there's not really any need to go over them. Beyond that, Paladins has also kicked off its summer circuit, its competitive scene, starting July 9th and running through August 28th. This is eight weeks of competition, single elimination open bracket tournaments, and $20,000 in total cash prizes here. Be sure to check out the new trailer you see playing here at the site posted in once.com to catch up on all the details. Once again, Paragon introduces a new hero. This time it's Greystone, a fighter who thrives in team fights and excels on the front lines. He looks quite a bit different than the crazy looking heroes that were released recently. He's not as monstrous, almost like they pulled a character out of Skyforge or something. He's clearly got some abilities that help him take a little bit more damage, but his ultimate is definitely where he stands out. When his opponents think they've taken him down, he turns into stone and is respawned through Reforged, his ultimate ability. Greystone returns from the dead with a portion of his HP and full mana while damaging and knocking up enemies around him. So he comes back with a vengeance. This new hero is headed to the game tomorrow, July 12th, along with a hero race to get things started, featuring the cumulative XP reward like they did with Chimera. This time around, the community reward is five card packs, but the stakes are a little bit higher. Check out the Paragon blog post for more details. Next up in a surprising, but maybe not so surprising turn of events, Turtle Rock Studios decided to take Evolve to Stage 2, which happens to mean free-to-play on PC. Evolve Stage 2 is a major update that not only makes the game free-to-play, but also overhauls the game with new mechanics, improved balance and performance, and a lot more. And when I say free, they mean free. Everything in the game can be unlocked with in-game currency, so there's no cash shop in the game. There's no cash in the game. There's a cash shop, but it's all in-game currency. And the only thing you can pay for is the Founder's Pack, which is almost like buying the game outright without having to progress to unlock stuff like skins, characters, and perks. Everyone who owned the game beforehand gets converted over to the Founder's version with a ton of unlocks. Don't worry, they still have matchmaking and ranking, so nobody's getting matched up with a super overpowered player that has everything where you don't. Every week they have new hunters and one of the monsters on free rotation, otherwise you can unlock them over time just by playing the game. And apparently this was a very popular move for the game. Over the past weekend it reached an all-time high player count, which is something like 1700% increase over the player count last month, as an example. So I say if you've got a PC that can handle it, it's definitely worth playing with friends. Check out my first look to get a little taste of the action. And on that note, talk about a game that should be free to play already. Lawbreakers has been running its weekend alpha test, and recently, in patch 0.4, they've introduced a new map, Promenade. It's actually the one that we got to play during E3. And the game feel changes that update the movement and ability cooldowns, just to change things up a bit. Actually, it's based on community feedback, which is nice. The new Promenade map takes place in Santa Monica, which is an island now in the newly rebuilt California Keys, which happens after the whole shattering event. It's slightly different than the Grandview map, but still has the large central point with zero gravity that's perfect for their other game mode that hasn't quite been put into the alpha just yet. And the in-game changes applied during this update are a result of community feedback, like I mentioned. Even I mentioned that the cooldowns needed to be reduced, so we've seen these adjustments added in. Additionally, Vanguard players will see a slight nerf to the Hydra Gatling gun. According to their data, the Vanguard class is doing a little bit too well right now, so they've increased the spin time ever so slightly from 3.3 seconds to 4 seconds. Now, the game is ironing out the details fairly quickly now. They just need to go into regular all-time closed alpha then open beta, and ultimately free-to-play. That'd be nice, thanks. 
But speaking of Nexon shooters and new maps, Dirty Bomb launches its classy art hold update that adds in the new gallery execution map, overhauling the crafting system and plenty more. Gallery is an execution map set in the fading splendor of London's South Main. I really like the way he says it in the video. You've got a decimated food court, an abandoned skate park, and of course, the gallery itself. This update adds in several new visual upgrades to the other execution maps as well. The newly overhauled crafting system makes trading up to rare loadout cards a lot easier. Now you can just drag and drop into the recycling spot to get fragments. The fragments are then used to purchase new cards. Easy as that. On top of all that, they're giving players gold loadout cases every day you log in until July 21st, so it might be a good time to see what's up in Dirty Bob. Next up, Warface decides to take a quick trip down memory lane, taking a look at how the game has evolved over its three years strong. Since the game has been released, they've added in three new versus modes, five new special operations, and over 100 weapons. Players have pulled off nearly 15 billion kills and over 44 million hours played, leading nearly 50 million climb assists, and medics have resurrected teammates over 91 million times. Pretty cool stats. Now in the most recent update for July, we see the new Team Deathmatch map Sirius, new weapons and gear, and three highly anticipated features. Sirius TDM is based on the popular domination mode map, taking place on Blackwood's home turf. This update introduced a ping limitation, so if a player has a ping higher than a specific figure for a certain amount of seconds, he will now automatically be kicked from the game room. It's pretty harsh, but this is something that is closely monitored by the Warface dev team, so hopefully we have nothing to worry about there. We're also now able to reconnect to ranked games in case of a crash, and also block connection to versus games that are already currently in progress. Lots of changes in this update, but lots of changes in general over Warface's three years running. And finally, for a last bit of news, Warframe Specters of the Rail update has arrived, bringing with it the new Arcwing experience, Space Cat Companions, system redesigns, and a whole lot more. Specters of the Rail is the second of the major three-part update cycle occurring this summer for Warframe, the third of which also got teased this past week as The War Within. Specters of the Rail introduces new Kavat Companions. These are ferocious space cats that come with their own armor and mods, offering a more defensive style of support in battle. As far as the Arcwing system goes, it's been overhauled completely, offering players six degrees of flight freedom, and they've also added in two new Arcwing game modes, Pursuit Mode and Rush Mode, along with support Arcwings for those who want to support their fellow Tenno. And that's not the only rework. The star chart has been renovated for this update, bringing back the nostalgic roadmap design that leads you through the stars to reactivate the links between planets called junctions. These are just some of the updates added in. This is a fairly large update, to be honest. Check out the site post to learn all about it and watch the latest teaser for The War Within to get a taste for what's next. Anyway guys, that's about it for all the major MMO news and announcements for this week. Like always, if you're looking for more information regarding the news featured in the recap, check the links in the description below or hang out at MMOS.com for the latest in gaming news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers.